Uh, we are here at r, r Driving, and I have a good buddy of mine, Steve, who basically graciously took some time from his busy day to sit and talk to me about his car passion that I got. Um, Steve, welcome to the show. Morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining me, because this means a lot to me. Steve's, again, a really great guy. A lot of people that see us in our cars, whether maybe a Porsche or a Ferrari or a Lambo, usually think, that guy must be a jerk. Because that's what people think about us, and I don't understand why. I've met so many people in this community that are down to earth, phenomenal, hardworking, and they just express their hard work by things like this. <laughs> so, when did you know, at what point, at age, did you know you were a car guy? Because I know it's, you know, you don't buy these from just being a regular Joe guy, you know? You know, car guy, uh, I'm not really sure, but I remember the first time that uh, I couldn't wait to buy my first Lamborghini. I was 16 years old. 16? 16. And you owned your... I was... Uh, no, I didn't own the first one at 16. That would that would be an incredible story. Yes. But I was uh, heading towards Miami Beach. I was on 79th Street, Biscayne Boulevard. I was stopped at a light. And I was going to go pick up a junk car. And... The truck I was in had no heat in it. I mean, it was so hot inside. And I was greasy, yeah. young guy, and I parked at the light, and I'm driving a truck that Sanford and Son would not drive. I mean, it was <laughs> raggedy. That's gotta be bad. <laughs> but I was making money, right? Of course, yeah. So I'm at this red light, and uh, just dreaming away, and I hear this noise coming, and it's loud. And you could hear it. Yeah. I mean, just the throat of this thing coming. And I'm like, and I couldn't understand what's going on because I'm at a red light. So whatever coming in from behind me right. is hauling ass, wow. right? So I look at my side view mirror because now it's starting to come up on me, right? Just then the light turns green and this guy in a Lambo was trying to time this light just right. right. So as he comes by, he hits Biscayne Boulevard and the Lambo was carbureted model. What you model know? was that? Uh, had to be so if you were 16, 83, you, 84, 83, so you're like talking about a Countach, baby. Countach, 5000 S, 5000 S, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, with the Weber carburetor, yeah, I mean, oh, you just yeah. hear 12 Weber carburetor. This guy's stepping music. on music. Oh, yeah, the light turns green, he just hits Biscayne Boulevard. You see the car catch just a little bit of air, hit the ground, and I mean, he is gone. Wow, to Miami Beach, and that was when I was like, I don't care how hard I gotta work, yeah. what I gotta do, yeah. One day I'm gonna get one. So that was that that, that was moment, my that was being, my epiphany that yeah. this is why I'm out here. This is why I'm sweating my ass off. And you work hard. I know that. Yeah. And I did in but order to to get at, to that point. In my at life. what age did you get your first Lamborghini? So I was in my 20s. Um, Early 20s, mid 20s. When I when I bought it, mid 20s. Mid 20s. Wow. Yeah. So again, and that was of course the Countach back in the time because back in the day the Countach that was the that was the the big dog. I mean, the there was nothing. Dog. I mean, what was gonna be back then? I mean, they didn't have a Pagani, a Bugatti, no, no. or anything like that. It, it was, was Ferrari, Lamborghini, and Porsche. It was Testarossa was and Countach, and yeah. the Testarossa was not catching the Countach. That, from experience, uh, Testarossa does not is have my heart. I love, the Testarossa, I love too, the Testarossa, but it ain't it. It don't have the balls that the Lambo has. Gotcha. It, it really doesn't. Gotcha, definitely. And that's the car. And that's right then you knew you had you wanted one and you got one. Yeah. Hard yeah. work and um But and in my twenties, but the yeah. story goes, now I'm sixteen, dirty, greasy. Yeah. Seventeen years old, mm -hmm. okay, one year later, okay, I'm at Prestige Imports. Yes. Miami Beach. Yes. Miami. North Miami Beach. Mm -hmm. That's where they have all the exotics. All, all the exotics. Yes. Yeah, back in the day. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't many places that you could buy an no. exotic back then. There was only, you know, yeah. a handful. I think they have a big, huge showroom with everything in there, basically. Yes. Yeah. So, Irv David, the owner, mm -hmm. himself. I knew him. I mean, I didn't know him personally. I mean, we did a little bit of business together because mm -hmm. I would pick up some of his cars that, you know, people traded in. And he was like, no. Steve, <laughs> come get this thing. It's junk. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I mean, he would get cars like that sometimes. It was crazy. Anyways, Irv himself, and my heart goes out to him, mm -hmm. because really this guy uh, made it possible for me to buy not only my first exotic car, mm -hmm. which I bought a Lotus Eclat. Yes. You guys will have to look that one I know, up. I know the car. Lotus Eclat. Yeah, I'm a car aficionado. Yeah, I'm a car aficionado. I, Two man, door, yeah. <laughs> four seater, and long, yep. long nose, yep. low nose, and... 
as a young guy, not having any credit mm -hmm. or anything like that, uh, me and Mr. David talked for a little while, and he said, Steve, he says, I'm gonna do something for you, I don't do it for nobody. Mm -hmm. He goes, I'm gonna hold recourse on this car for you so you can get started. Now at the time, wow. I didn't know what that meant. Right. But recourse meant no matter what happens with my credit, mm -hmm. I'm going to get the car sure. because he's signing for me. Wow. Mr. David signed for me mm -hmm. on that car. Wow. And not only that, he himself sold me that car. He yeah. didn't put it out to a salesman. I mean, no. he had several salesmen there that he could have yeah. did. Himself came out yeah. and helped me to get that car. So he kind we of went into financing and I told him, I said, Irv, I, I don't really know what that means. What does that mean? He says, Steve, all you got to do is tell me you want that car. Mm -hmm. And if George is going to drive out of here, I said, today? He wow. says, right now, Steve. <laughs> and uh, I mean, a, a great guy. Yes. I mean, really was. I mean, a 17 year old kid, this guy signs for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I still remember to Something this day. Unheard, unheard I, of. I don't remember what I paid for the car. It was like $22,000, $23,000. I gave the down payment, whatever, it was a couple grand. And I made every payment on that car for four years. I remember what the payment was $520 wow. a payment. Yeah. And I made sure that I sent it out a week in advance. On time. Yeah, because yeah. not only did I, I not want to have any problems with my credit, I wanted credit, and I didn't sure. have any credit. Sure. But I would never have done anything to disappoint Mr. David that Absolutely. he thought that he did this for me and that it didn't go through. Wow. So yeah, wow. to this day I remember I made every single payment a week in advance and then I called the finance company, did you get my payment? Did yes. you get my payment? Wow. And, and that's make sure that they received my yeah. payment. You know, back so in the day. Young credit, young mail. guy, and you're here driving a Lotus and it was uh, your your first entry level sports car. Yeah. Exotic I Lotus. A lot, yeah, yeah, Lotus, yes, an English exotic car. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, you probably felt you were on top of the world, but it made you, it drove you to want more, obviously. Oh, it sure did. Yeah. It sure did. And then the memories and the things that that car brought was, uh, especially down in Miami during those days of the 80s, it was, it was crazy. Really, this is PG. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was nutty to say the least. I can only imagine. Yeah. So after that car, I mean, what do you, what do you get next? So, because the thing is, again, that's a great car. And you know, growing up down there in that era, mm -hmm. um, you know, you had Prestige, uh, you had uh, William Lehman, you know, they were selling the Rolls Royces sure. and Bentleys and stuff. And, uh, you know, of course, back then for me as a 20 year old guy, you know, I wasn't looking for a Rolls or a Bentley. You know, it's, no, it's older, an old man's car. Yeah, it's an older man's car. Then, then. then. Nowadays, you oh, know, yeah. it's uh, sophisticated now that a younger guy can drive it. Um, but they had the auto toy store. I remember down that in too. Yeah. Fort Lauderdale. Yep. I used to take my dates down there at night and just walk the window. They had these big, huge glass windows, and yeah. you could look inside, and they'd have all the time 30, 40 different exotics down there. And I would just go there and just drool on their glass. Wow. And that's the date. She would get that first. Yes. And if she didn't complain, she got dinner. If they, she complained, yeah, they, you got it. that's the night We're right going there. Home. Going home. <laughs> that but, just goes to show that you are a true car guy. Because, yeah. again, that's part of your passion, and it's always been in your system. And love it, love it, love it, love it. So my first Lamborghini that I bought, um, I walked into the toy store. Mm -hmm. Anybody that knows the toy store back in the day, mm -hmm. uh, it had a reception desk right up front. Mm -hmm. And it was roped off. You only got as far as that reception desk. Right. Now, as a young guy, I probably should have maybe dressed for the occasion, but I would never have thought that I was actually, you know, in that realm to buy a car like that. Now, Herb, of course, helped me finance my first car, and by then, you know, with my salvage yard, I bought, you know, forklifts, and I mm -hmm. bought a tow truck, and, you know, maybe a pickup truck for doing deliveries and mm -hmm. stuff like that, but nothing in the realm of an, you know, hundred and whatever thousand dollar, two hundred thousand dollar car. So I walk in, and the girl behind the desk, you know, really good looking, yeah. young, you know what I mean? Yeah. She's so built. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Dressed extremely yeah, nice. That's all strategically done. You know that. <laughs> I went in, in, uh, just a pullover shirt. Yeah. Corduroy shorts. You remember the corduroys, oh, right? Oh my God. Yeah. Corduroy shorts. Right. And she looked me up and down and she goes, can I help you? And I said, well, I just want to look around, see if I see something that I like. Mm -hmm. And she goes, you know, you just can't come in and look around. I mean, she says, we get a lot of people like that all the time. Yeah. And I said, but I might be different. So she goes, wait right here. She gets on the phone. She's saying something on the phone. I can't hear what she's saying. Next thing I know, I look over and I see a guy walking down the staircase. Mm -hmm. You know, it had a second floor to it. He comes down. He introduces himself. His name is Steve. Okay. He's the finance guy. I didn't know it at the time. He's the finance guy. Mm -hmm. He looks at me and he's like, 
I see him like go like this to the girl, shake his head. Yeah. So anyways, he goes like this. He pulls me over. We go upstairs. We're talking. I tell him a little business that I have and what I'm doing and stuff like that. And he's behind his computer. He's doing something. He's doing something, right? And we're talking and talking and talking. And he says, give me your name. I give him my name. We go through the whole rigmarole and stuff like that. He gives his social security number. He says, let me run your name. So he runs my name. Now I'm 20. I'm in my early 20s. Right. So he looks over and uh, he looks past his screen and he says, um, what were you interested in? I said, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked. I haven't seen right. anything yet. He goes, now this is a true story. Now, a lot of people don't even think this is bullshit. But anybody that knows me, yeah. you know what I, mean? I hate to even say that because you're going to have a lot of people looking at his YouTube. No, it is what it is. I always carried, carried, I don't do it anymore, a lot of money on me because I would go and buy sometimes 25, 30 cars a day sometimes. Wow. So he says, do you and you're talking cash. Cash money. Cash yeah, money. back in the day, that's what it was. Oh, you yeah. Know what yeah. I mean? So, I, so I mean, I, I, that, you know, do you have a deposit for a car like this? Yeah. I reached in my pocket and I had a rubber band and a stack. It was 40000 and I threw it on his table. He says, go ahead and pick that back up. I pick it back up. And I'm wondering what's going on. So he takes me. He says, come on downstairs. I'm thinking he's going to walk me out. Right. Right? We get to the bottom of the stairs. And there's all these, I mean, he's got a couple of Lolas there. He's got uh, Maseratis, uh, Lambos, Ferraris, a few Porsches. He says to me, he puts his arm around my shoulder. He says, Steve, pick out whatever you want. So I guess my credit came up good. <laughs> of course. So at that point, uh, I seen a red Lamborghini Countach. Wow. And I said, I want that one. I said, how much is it? He says, 145. Mm -hmm. Well, I had 40 on me. Sure. So we finished the deal. I paid full price. I was so excited I didn't even negotiate. And wow. I mean, I'm a negotiator because yeah. I negotiate That's what every you day Absolutely. for cars on the street. I'm trying to save $10 on a car yes. and I'm buying 145000 Lambo. I didn't negotiate a time. Wow. I was so excited that I was even buying the damn thing. That's how sales works. <laughs> so long story short, um, they asked me where I want it delivered. They're going to get it cleaned up and stuff like that. Yeah. And I started thinking about it and I had a, a guy that I knew that worked on Lamborghinis. Sure. And I know him because... Every time I used to get like an Alfa Romeo or something like that, mm -hmm. I would sell it to him and he'd fix it up and resell it. Right. And uh, his name was uh, Steve, Steve Clawson. So Steve sold you the car. Steve fixed no. your car. Yeah. Your name is Steve. My name is Steve. I, I, I see yeah. a pattern here, oh, you know? Oh, it was crazy. <laughs> so I told him, ship it to him. Yeah. I want him to look at the car and make sure everything's okay, even though I've already bought the car. Right. You know what I mean? So I sent it over to him. He calls me up and he says, Steve, you got a good deal. But let me do a couple things for you. On the Countach, the shifters, that goddamn. Oh, yeah. With the, and it's straight. Yeah. Yeah. So he cuts the shifter down. I'm like, are you sure you're going to cut the shifter on my Lambo? <laughs> right. He says, Steve, you're going to love it. He cuts the shifter down yeah. to about three inches shorter than yeah. what it was. And he says, we're going to turn up the rev limiters. These cars are notorious for hitting a certain rev. Yes. He says, I'll make sure that you don't blow your engine or anything like that because they right. didn't have it like they have nowadays. No, you have to protect your engines and all. So. Turn up the red learner. He says, I'm going to fine tune it. It's got twin cams yes. on the back of that car. And it's got two distributors. I don't yeah. know if you guys know that. It's got yeah, two yeah. distributors. So there's a V12, these, and yeah, definitely. Yeah. He fine tuned that car. He said there was two computers on the car that he was going to exchange that they had a replacement for mm -hmm. that gave that car more power, wow. more horsepower, um, um, better induction, whatever sure, they were doing sure. with the motor. Valve timing said, and all that good stuff. Go ahead and Go ahead and do it. And I think all that cost me 6000 on top of what I paid for the car. And, uh, and and this is not ego talking or anything like that. When I got that, oh, on top of that, when he was done with the car, now I never drove the car, <laughs> never took possession of this wow. thing. You know what I mean? And I sent it to him. Okay. I had a yard in Opelaka. If anybody knows where Opelaka, Miami is. No. Okay. It's like one of the, uh, it's in the hood. Yeah. You know, really. Yeah. And uh, I had that car picked up and delivered to my salvage yard. Yes in Opelaka and had it dropped off there. Bright red Countach. Countach. <laughs> the baddest car you could buy back in the day. Of course. Okay. And I dropped it at the salvage yard. And then all my friends at the other salvage yards, they come out of their places and they're like, what's going on? Where, what is this? You know, because they, they know it's not a junk car. Absolutely. You know, yeah. coming there. I said, no, I just bought it. And they can't believe that somebody in the scrap business yeah. Can buy a car like that. So basically, that's how you mastered your 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 wealth, your scrap business and everything. In the scrap business, yeah. Very nice. In the scrap business, buy nice. a car for a hundred dollars, you scrap it, you get three hundred dollars. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. why more people 
don't do it. No, 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 I know. fantastically well. Oh, yeah. Part of, part of my channel, too, is not just talking about you and the cars, but to show that with the hard work, a scrap business is no joke. It takes a lot of work and a lot of negotiating, just like you said. Anybody can get these cars if they really put their mind and their desire into it. If you don't, if you're not into cars, get watches. I know you have a very nice watch collection, just the same. And yes. again, that's part of your passion is because you work hard for it. You know, you can get a beautiful home because of your passion. So it's all about inspiration to say anybody can do this. So don't let anything stop you if you have a dream. You know, it's all about making it work. Correct. So based on that. Um, I mean, we have a mutual friend of ours who's got a brand new Huracan. Yeah. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, who I said, what do you do for a living? And he says, I own a taco restaurant. I said, a taco oh, restaurant. Oh, that's a different guy. I did, I, 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 yeah. yeah, different guy. Got you. No, no, yeah, no, no, I don't, And I'm like, tacos? Yeah. He goes, yeah. He says, I'm responsible. I'm the first one there in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm the last one to leave. Yeah. And he says, I do what I'm supposed to do, and yeah. I afford a Huracan. Oh, wow. And I'm like... Damn, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. So, yeah, so the that just goes to show. I mean, he's selling tacos. I'm doing scrap metal. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. it's some of the stories some of these guys got is... Uh, I've, I've heard some incredible stories. Yeah. And it's then, crazy. They have a dream. They fill that dream and bam, and off they go. Happen. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Give me a so, so my Countach, uh, when I get it out of the shop, I get it to the salvage yard. Now, I've, I've never had a car that powerful before. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I drive it. I take it down the street. That thing... Back in the, it was insane. Right. See, it was absolutely insane. What this guy did to my car to fine tune that thing. Yeah. I mean, at because I mean, the other sequels are all by screwdrivers and all yeah. that. Because back then it wasn't a computer. Too. No, no. It was literally sure fine tuning the carburetors and all that. And each, it's each a different one. world back then. And if you have it wrong, you can mess up everything. So take yeah. someone who really understands the Italians and how they figure out what they wanted for someone to say, well, I'm going to fix this and make it better without messing anything up. Yeah, you know? at, at any time you step on that thing, it would do 200 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. Crazy. Oh, my God, I can yeah. imagine. So now you've had that, and then what followed after your Countach? Um, well, that's a, that's a long story. I've, I've had a, after that, I've had a lot of cars. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. the a business lot of that I was in yeah. afforded me um, to do a lot of different things. Porsches, nice. uh, Ferraris, mm -hmm. um, I mean, just whatever... You know, I don't want to say whatever my whim was, but you know, I made sure that I always had something going mm -hmm. on at the time. But, but yeah, at, a lot of different cars. But at the end of it, you still went right back to Lamborghini. Because I absolutely love the yeah. Lamborghini. I love the Lamborghini uh, philosophy of the people. Yes. The people that drive Lamborghinis drive Lamborghinis. You know, they people drive that hard. Yeah, yeah. own Ferraris don't necessarily drive their Ferrari. Yes. And they don't. And, and I'm not saying that that keeps me from owning a Ferrari. But I like the idea of, you know, I, I want to drive my car. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I remember once uh, when we went on a drive together, <clears throat> you would tell me, a lot of people do tell me the same thing that you told me that day. They love my drives because it's, it's controlled. We can open our cars and have a little fun with it. The Lambo guys, they all want to go crazy. It's balls to the walls. And they're all doing 200 yeah, miles. It's just no, crazy. I'm, I'm 70 miles an hour the whole yeah. time. So I'm not in that group of guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a different mindset. So for some, but a lot of Lamborghinis, they buy those cars and they're hitting 200 miles per hour. Any opportunity they get, you know, for that quick, and then they let go. So, you know, it's not like we're racing our cars on the road, but it's just. I have no idea what you're talking about. No, not all. In Mexico. <laughs> you know, we, we ship them to Mexico where there's no speed limit and we can do whatever we want in Mexico, but yeah. then we have to ship it back. So, yeah, I've been, Ex I've been exciting to rallies going on. I mean, that's one of the reasons why yeah. I buy the car. Back in the day when I had my Countach, they didn't do things like that. No. And, uh, you know, you drove up with a Countach. I mean, there might have been, you know, a 928 or something there, but right. I mean, uh, um, I mean, they just didn't have rallies and, no. and meets like that. And yeah, nowadays, they have them all over the place. All over the place. Yeah, it's and now exciting that, to own a car. You make and it then have something like that, even you know? fun because you share your car. You've gone to charitable events yeah. and letting children sit in your car and attracting more fundraisers for, um, for charitable events. And I think, again, again, it goes to show the type of people that are involved in this community is is uh, nothing like what people think. No, you know? no, nothing it really, like what it people really, think. And it really, it's a shame. A lot of the guys, you hear some of their stories. And I mean, um, a lot of them, they work hard to be where they're at. Absolutely. To have what they have. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, me and myself, 40 years. 40 years. Yeah, doing wow. the same thing. Wow. Yeah. Have you done any modifications to your vehicles? Uh, I haven't done anything to my car. <laughs> not, not that you need to when you have a Lambo, but. <laughs> yeah, only because for me, with the SV, I don't want to change anything that's original on it. Correct. You know what I mean? I don't, want to, I don't want to modify it because mm -hmm. 
the car is always going to have mm -hmm. um, a warp. Absolutely. Better if I if I don't modify. If it. you like, don't modify, you're like absolutely. Mercy right. SV. Yes. I mean, it's done nothing but go up in value. Absolutely. But if I'd have modified it, twin turboed it, or something like that, um, you know, that's it for me. It's not for me. No, I'm, no, no. I'm more like you. the old school, keep it original. Kind of yeah. Guy. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, absolutely. and a lot of my friends, they do a lot of things to their car, and I love yeah. it. I love hearing the stories about it. Sure. It's just not for me. No, no, it doesn't have to be. Yeah. This is this no, is an fast thing. For me, it's fast enough, and it's iconic enough. Absolutely. And, I mean, the angles. Yeah, the lines, everything. Yeah, that's when, when you when you stop at a why gas station. change that? You know what I mean? That's like changing a Monet or something. You know why what would mean? you do that? Yeah. Put a little mustache. Yeah. With the girl. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make for me. It doesn't make sense. But the guys that do it, hey, great. I yeah. love it. Oh know? yeah, yeah. And yeah. I love looking at their cars. Sure. But it's just not for me. It's not for you. Do you yeah. do any other work on the car yourself? Little things, not not too. Because I know these cars are pretty precision precision uh, machines and you know even the oil change mm -hmm. you know possibly I could do it myself you know because I'm pretty mechanically inclined yeah. but I just take it to the dealer just in case God forbid something happens because absolutely it, you know it's uh it takes it's, a liability off your hands you know when you say that you know you, you do what you can to afford these cars but something goes wrong with them yeah it's no joke it, yeah. it'll cost you it'll cost you absolutely. yeah so if I take it to the dealer it might cost me a little bit more I think my oil change is uh, eight or nine hundred bucks yeah <laughs> to change the oil but I let them do it. God forbid something happens, and yeah. you know they're responsible. It's still under warranty, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, I leave it. From I mean, there. when you when you buy a car with the value that these cars are worth, nine hundred is not a drop in the bucket, but it's not. You understand why you're paying nine hundred bucks, so, yes. so it makes sense to you. Yeah, which is crazy because Lamborghini gives a two-year unlimited mileage warranty. Unlimited mileage. Unlimited mileage. I mean, you're going to see this car three years from now. It's going to yeah. have 1,500 miles on it yes. from somebody else. Not yeah. for me, no, no, no. of course, because I'm driving, driving. I'm enjoying my car. I you know what I mean? You for that. So if I'm paying 500 and change for my car, yes. it's not sitting in my garage no. for me to come out here and no. look at it. No. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I'm out on the road. I want to feel it. I want to drive it. I want to sure. be with my friends and hang out. Absolutely. So, I mean, and that's, for me, that's part of that's what, what it's all about. Yeah, that's why I bought it. Absolutely. You know I mean? In addition to that, um, what's your next car? I mean, because you guys, some people will look at this, the Aventador, fine. Aventador SV, wow. Musilago SV, what do you get that basically moves you that you say, it could be analog, it could be an older Porsche, just for the analog of it and the, and the rawness, or, but what would be your next car? For me, the next car is going to be uh, one of three. And the only reason why I don't mention Ferrari is because Ferrari won't let me buy a car from them. An anniversary be car. Well, because I'm not a Ferrari owner. So right. even if I wanted to buy a new Ferrari, no matter what kind of Ferrari it is, yes. I can't buy it new. No. I kind of don't like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, I, I mean, I know it works for them. Yeah, it works for them. Some politics involved with that, but it works for them. It is. Mm -hmm. So Ferrari, for me, is out because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Lambo, they're more uh, realistic. Sure. You know what I mean? With people yes. in general. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't mean anything against Ferrari. No. It's just that point keeps mm -hmm. me from Ferrari. And I, it keeps a lot of guys from Ferrari, believe I it or not. I know. Oh, yeah. I'm a, big, I'm a bigger Ferrari enthusiast than I am with my Porsche. Mm -hmm. Big Ferrari enthusiast. I know <laughs> history. I know everything. I know models, years, everything. It's unattainable for me. I, you know, it's, if I hit Lotto today, they won't sell me a new car. They said, right. well, you got to start off with this, then we can take it from there. And work your way up. And work your way up. I can't just jump into one of the cooler cars. Sometimes you know? you'll have to spend millions of dollars to get to something, and then still might not get it. And still might not get it. It's up Absolutely. to them. Yeah, because yeah. they have their buyers and their people, and that's just how they work. So yeah. what would you get then if it's not going to be a Ferrari? Okay, so I've got three cars. One, the Pagani. The Pagani, uh, the stats on it, mm -hmm. I think my SV mm -hmm. is close to the same stats. I mean, they're, right. they're performance-wise. Sure. But the Pagani is is this guy, Horatio Pagani. I mean, mm -hmm. that thing is a work of art. So you're looking at, at the I mean, Wawa? Yeah. Yeah. So really, to tell you the truth, any Pagani at this point for me. Sonda, I just, Wawa, oh, it doesn't stop, matter. Stop, you're killing it. <laughs> stop. So mainly because it's a it's a freaking work of art. I love it. I look inside that car. All like aluminum. Brett David has oh, yeah. the ones down there oh, in yeah. Miami, and I'm just like, it's just unbelievable. Absolutely. I mean, it's like. Uh, you know, it's hard to explain. It's like you're looking at this fountain in Rome, and it's just beautiful. And you're just staring at it, and then yes. you catch yourself. You're like, I'm standing here for 20 minutes looking at this goddamn thing. It's a work you know of what art. I mean? It's crazy. Each piece, that yeah. aluminum billet cut, 
is a work of art yeah. in that car. It really is. It's and you can amazing. really see that somebody put their passion into that thing. Yes. Now this thing is a, I mean, it's a, it's a monster, it's a you know what I mean? The, yeah. the angles and everything else. Yeah. And it's it's got a lot of features too that are really nice. But yeah. that Pagani, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a to me, yeah, it really is. Yeah. So if, if it was, it would be a Pagani because I think that's more in my price range of what I could possibly get. Sure. You know, because these things get into the millions of dollars. Yeah, they do. Uh, the second one is the Cone Seg. Cone uh, Yeah, I want to uh, I want to fly to the factory and just go there and drool right. at them putting this Almost. thing together. I which mean, that, which the, particular um, the, cone is it? Like the, 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 if I could ever get the one to one. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that that would be yeah. that would be the one that I would. I think uh, they made what seventy seven. Oh no, no, no. That's uh, Aston Martin. They made they limited really low twenty five. I think it is. I forgot what the number was on that. Don't quote me, but. Yeah. If, if I could get anyone, that would be the one. Other than that, I, I mean, I would take anyone that they would allow me to buy. Absolutely. You know, because same thing, they, I mean, they're pre-sold. I think they're pre-sold for the next three years. Crazy. So if you wanted one, you got to wait three years yeah. and then get in line with, you know, oh, yeah. another hundred people. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. when I seen this, uh, this guy from um, the Sheik, and he's got 74 of them, and I'm like, that's that bastard. crazy. 74, yeah, he's got him crazy. sitting there. He's, he's of, bought of, them all. Of Brunei. <laughs> yeah, the, the Sultan, Sultan of Brunei. Brunei. Yeah. yeah, he's got 74 cone segs sitting there. I've seen his garage. I, oh, want, yeah. to, I want to hurt somebody. Oh, like, yeah. He's he's one of the few people that Ferrari will build a custom vehicle for him to where he wants. I think he has a four a three a 456 station wagon. He has, I mean, four-door, four, you know, station wagon. He has all these custom bodied I don't, I don't see how that's helping their brand by helping their brand you money let talks. somebody like steve saylor buy one of those cars right i'm going to take it to every event possible that's right you tell me to have it in los angeles i'll be in los angeles Absolutely. to show it you got yeah. it in Brunei, sitting in a garage in a garage what? collecting dust let riding. me drive it let me have it on the streets yeah. you know what i mean Absolutely. let me take my friends for a ride because they ain't driving it no. You know what I mean? You're no. not going to drive my car, but I'll take you for a ride. I'll take you for a ride. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Because he's like, yeah. And then, uh, of course, the next one would be the Bugatti. When the Bugatti first came out and they were trying to get the, the car to run and not overheat when mm -hmm. they were getting a thousand horsepower, and then they finally came out and said, okay, thousand and one horsepower. We finally got it straight. And I looked at that car and I was like, wow. Done. I mean, it's four it's radiators, perfect. whatever it yeah. is. There's yeah. so much 16 stuff going on with cylinders. That car. I was like, 16 Quad turbos. cylinders. Oh, my God. <laughs> It, it, it's driving me crazy. You say quad turbos, and I'm like, quad Holy turbo, crap! It's ridiculous. You know, it's oh, yeah. it's, ridiculous. it's ridiculous. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then, I mean, I got two SV Lambos. How yeah. much more ridiculous? You how, know what I mean? How much more ridiculous? Yeah. Put a Bugatti in my driveway, oh, and it'd be gosh. like, you know, and it's same thing. I mean, take it. It, I mean, they could tell me to take it to Kalamazoo. I'd be like, when? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just let me buy one. You exactly. Know what I mean? Let me get it at the price. Don't. You know what I mean? Uh, it doesn't like, even need like, to be the new Chiron. It has like the Chiron, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're saying five million dollars, oh. but it really sells for two point five. Let me have it for the two point five. Absolutely. I'm gonna be your bitch. I'm gonna take it whatever you want me to do. Absolutely. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll take it to every event you want me to, but let me show the car. You know these other guys. I mean, they're putting five hundred miles on it. I see one for sale the other day. It was a uh, 2013 or whatever, 14, uh -huh. and it's got 1,800 miles. What? That car would have 180,000 miles on it. Yeah. Was mine. I mean, it would. I would. I would I, drive that car. I heard it put best, because you know V12s of any make, whether it's a Jaguar V12, Mercedes V12, Ferrari V12, Lamborghini V12, they said they break people because the, the 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 amount of money it costs to maintain them. Break me. But they say. Break me. A, I, I love a, it. A Bugatti will break any V12 owner. Oh yeah. <laughs> when well, it comes to maintenance. Likely. They, that's that's what they likely. say. So it's, it's a different type of car. I have to yeah. I have to go back to hustling again. You will have to hustle yeah. again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Two, but, three scrap yards, I think maybe. Yeah, that might kind of do. I have right to there. open up scrap yards as I need to repair my car. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody could do it, it'd be you, sir. Yeah. So, you mind if we take one of these guys out for a ride? Sure. Pick which one you want to drive. We'll take the yellow one today. The yellow one today yeah. sounds yeah. great. So, let's do it. All right. All right. Thank you.
with Steve's Lambo right now, and we're just taking it for a quick drive, um, just to get a good feel of the car. We're in the neighborhood, so uh -huh. we're taking it easy. We're just, yeah, we're pulling out of his neighborhood right now. I wish there was a rally going on. Oh my God, yeah. Well, later on, did you want to go to that clean, that simply clean show? Yeah, maybe we'll head up that way. Okay. that you you don't like to modify or anything no. that's a stock exhaust in the stock, car stock exhaust. oh my goodness that that is, ties ties us me he's got a he's got an exhaust in his oh car. i know it's, it's, it's absolutely insane insane it's yes. ear piercing his exhaust yeah but it sounds awesome so they're changing the clutches in these cars for the next year model so the rumor is Double then, clutch uh, now. We will see how yeah. they how they feel. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good this one, but the thing that Lamb a lot of people don't know is that Lamborghini still went with the single clutch because they wanted you to feel that power during the shifts. Where the the double clutch is a lot smoother, so it's going to take away a lot of the edge, but it will give you better zero to sixty time because it's just more linear. You don't have any of that delay that you do with that single clutch, you know. But that's what Lamborghini owners like is that feel of the power, the shift, and yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna hurt a lot of people. But it's kind of like Ferrari when they got away from the gated shifter, right. people were upset. But now every Ferrari is all with paddles, and their performance time has just improved. And you know, I get the mentality behind it. Just like the Countach when I had the Countach back in the day, that was a car that you had to drive that car. Yeah, I mean it was. Uh. I can it was imagine. a little hard to steer. First was over from second, so you had to know what you're doing so you don't jam it into reverse. Wish they had a little gate that you could put over so you didn't put it into reverse wow. by accident. And, uh, yeah, that pedals, lockout, the little yeah, lockout thing, yeah. The pedals were offset, so you actually drove the car with your feet over to one side. Sideways. Yeah, and when you stepped on it, you better hold on. You better I mean, hold car, on, I mean, wow. It, it, it was amazing. And don't drive it in the rain. It oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no I mean, VDC, no electrical, electrical no. stability control. I mean, nothing. it just broke loose. I mean, you could be doing 50 miles an hour. It's just, it just comes loose in the rain. I mean, it was wow. Not, it's like driving a steamroller, you know? It just caught so much lift from wow. the bad tires. Yeah, so that one, uh, you really had to drive it. But I mean, that was the that was part of the fun. That was part that of the car, fun, you know absolutely. I mean? They're making them so easy nowadays that uh, you know, well, this one you got to pay a little bit of attention to because it's so fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and back in the day, you had to steer. I mean, everything's power steering now, steering yes. assist. You know, paddle shift. You know, you, yeah. you know, it doesn't really matter what gear you're in. I mean, you go into any gear and it automatically goes in. Back in the day, in the Kutash, well, you had to have the thing oh, yeah. rev to the right RPM yes. to get it into the gear. Transmission had to be warmed up to get it going. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, you're going to get a lot of grinding out of it. Oh, yeah. You don't want to be grinding your car with everybody looking at you. No, 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 no. And this is just so different from a from a Ferrari, you know. All the Alcatara that I see, the leather on the dash, which is really cool. Um, so if you can see here, you got the Alcatara, the leather, the. You also have the carbon fiber on on every single. Everything that's not plastic is carbon fiber, and again amazing so it's crazy Woo! it's what we do on the tunnels <laughs> i wish i wish florida had more tunnels to drive through <laughs> i was in when i lived in new york i was with a buddy of mine he had a yellow lamborghini um diablo roadster and we <laughs> One of those neck restraints yeah. <laughs> to, to protect yourself from whiplash because this is pure raw power. But we were in this Lamborghini and then uh, we went through the um, I think it's the Lincoln, the, one of the tunnels leading to Jersey underground. 
the whole way under the water. It was amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. You ever get your chance to drive a Lambo under the tunnel? You, oh my God! You I haven't lived. Here, huh? until you haven't you lived, lived right? <laughs> Have not lived until you do so. How about visibility in this car? How, how long does it take for you to get used to driving it with these small windows? Yeah, you can't see a lot out the back. The side is pretty good. I mean, the, the windshield is is all right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's not like the 720S. 720S out the windshield. I mean, you can see a lot more. Oh yeah, the visibility is. is the um, 720S. Have you seen the new 720S Spider that's out now? I have not seen one yet. I know that they're starting to. Um, oh yeah. Release them now. So. Oh, the, even the back is all window, so you can see everything. It's like a greenhouse effect in the car. You see, there's no darkness anywhere. It's amazing. Right. So yeah, if you get a chance, look it up, and you'll you'll see it. It's but yeah, but Lambo's always historically been, you know, you have a lot of blind spots and it's super wide on the road, but nothing can compare on the road to a Lamborghini. Yes. You pull up somewhere, you open your doors and everybody it's, it's an auto show automatically. Everybody knows Lamborghini. Everybody knows yeah, everybody. Lamborghini. Yeah. The Kuntash, extremely, extremely terrible visibility. Yeah. You can't yeah. see nothing out the back. No. The mirrors were small. Man, but and even the windows gotta, that roll down are tiny windows too. If you gotta look in your rear view mirror, you shouldn't be driving. <laughs> I love it. It's what matters is what's, up, what's front. up front. <laughs> I love it. Because if they're behind you, they're behind you for a reason. And they're not, and they're not catching up. Yes. No. <laughs> that is so true and so funny. But now the cars are coming out with so much horsepower. The new Lambo's coming out 883 horsepower. 883 horsepower. It's, I mean, I don't know where they're going to go with this horsepower. I wow. mean, that, that Cohen said 1500 Bugatti 1500 yeah. oh horsepower. Yeah, oh my God. I mean, talking about reaching 300 miles an hour. Yes. Where? Where? Wow. What kind of tires are you going to put in that car that's not going to blow up at that kind of stage? You, you know? be able to handle it. And I mean, you're going to get... Somebody is going to go out there and try to test that. Absolutely. Thing. How many times do you ride on the road and you get like these guys that want to race with you? They're S2000s. The S2000s. Any of them. Any, any of the Hondas and these little mod kids. I know I get it all the time and I just kind of give them a thumbs up and I'm done. Because I, I'm, I'm not racing one of these guys, of course. I want to... I, I don't, we're, we're not supposed to race on the road anyway, but if they all want to race us. I don't know why. I wave. I like seeing their car. They like seeing my car. No, exactly. I'm, I'm for it, man. I love I love any modded vehicles, anything that's performance-based, so I don't down anybody. Because, again, I have a 350Z that's modded, and it's all the fun in the world getting it to where I got it to, you know? So that's part of the fun, I think. Again, Steve, thank you so much for taking the time today. You're welcome, Ron. Drive around and, and talk about your car, talk about your passion, talk about you. And I look for more, forward for more drives. And now that when I do more videos and your car is in the background, I will say, hey, that's Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so again, Steve, take care and thank you so much. Thank you, Ron. All right. And again, stay tuned for our next show in R&R &R where we're going to feature some other cars. And remember, uh, eat, sleep, and drive. R&R &R driving.